What's up everybody, welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is a how-to video on how to play MMA DFS. What's up guys, welcome to my how-to video on how to play MMA DFS. Um, this is for like the newer people that are coming in. We know that this is the only sport right now out there on DraftKings and FanDuel besides like League of Legends and um, other online sports but this is like the only actual sport out there right now so I know it's going to be very popular become uh, a lot more popular so this is for the newer people or even if you've been playing for a little bit not doing so well maybe these strategy and tips will help you out or uh, if you've been playing for a while and you want to become a better MMA DFS player maybe this video will help you out as well so I think this could be useful for pretty much everyone and I think I have a lot of good information on here a lot of good tips for you guys so um, yeah Make sure you follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. If you have a question as well, I'll get back to you right away. Uh, make sure you check out my Patreon for some extra content. Uh, link will be in the description. And also, like this video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, turn on that notification bell so you don't mess out on my videos. I'm going to be posting a lot of videos um, uh, next week. Um, my DraftKings video, prediction video, and, uh, and so on. So, make sure you guys check that out. Uh, I guess first I'll show you... Um, my Patreon page and what you'll get with the subscription there. Um, this is the main page. I kind of changed it up a little bit. This uh, model is from uh, the last week of MMA before our three-week break. Uh, but I did change it up a little bit for UFC 249. I added a bunch of stats um, and a lot more things. But you get the name, salary, opponent, KO percentage, sub percentage, finish rate, wins, losses, reach, and odds and finish percentage. Um, this is what my targets page looks like. You got the core plays, live dogs, punts, GPP play, pays and plays and fades, and then also the fight does not go to decision lines. And I highlight the ones that are most likely to go that not are the, that are most likely not to go to decision. And um, also, it is important to become a Patreon member because I do add plays throughout the week or even take plays out. Um, so that's important as well. This is the projection page, my favorite page on the whole model. You got the fighter, the salary, average points for fight. Uh, the odds of winning, the odds of finishing, and then I have a cash projection that I use with Vegas odds and finishes, finish props uh, to come up with a cash projection. Projection rank and value. And then I have my optimizer where it makes an optimal lineup, and I also have my own optimal cash lineup on there as well. It's pretty cool. Um, if you want to see that video, it is on my Patreon page. And then I got the rankings here. Um, cash rankings, GPP rankings, underdog rankings, winning probability, and finish probability as well. And then my lineup percentages, and then also you get access to my Slack chat as well. All right, so let's start the slideshow here. Uh, DraftKings, we're going to start with DraftKings. I will be putting um, timestamps in the description to show you where FanDuel is at and where DraftKings is at because I know some people want to just play DraftKings, some people just want to play FanDuel. So I will put the uh, timestamps in the description for you guys. We're going to look at the contest, the scoring, the strategy in general, the GPP strategy, the cash strategy, uh, and how to make that winning lineup. All right, DraftKings contest, you got a $10 or $15, 20, 150 max. It is $20 this, uh, this week for UFC 249. Uh, you get the $4 20 max, which is recommended. This week it's a $3 20 max, uh, $1 150 max, a three entry max, a single entry, the double ups, uh, head to heads, and you just got to find what fits you, find what you're good at. Um, I recommend the $4.20 max. I do it every single time. I've done it for the past couple of years. And then the double ups, I really recommend because uh, you have close to a 50% chance of winning and doubling up your money. Um, as you can see in the middle here, this was um, last year whenever Masvidal knocked out Darren Till in the second round, which was awesome. Uh, won a GPP here. I shared it, the winnings with, uh, I think it was like two or three people. So um, usually the wins are split between like uh, five to 10 people, depending on the card. Um, it could get very chalky, but yeah, this is what I typically, a typical night in MMA looks for me. I get the 20 max, um, a couple single entries. I usually do double ups. I did not do that in this particular slate, but I usually do a couple hundred and double ups. Um, and then now I'm doing maybe like 10 to 15 lineups in like the 150 max, which I do not really recommend doing that. Um, I don't really know why I do it just maybe get lucky, but it is very hard to compete against other people that, um, are maxing out the 150 max doing 150 lineups. If you put a lineup in there, it's really hard to win against someone else that has an advantage of like 149 more lineups than you. So that's what I don't recommend. And I think that's where a lot of people make mistakes is putting a couple lineups in the 150 max. I mean, maybe it works, maybe you get lucky, but I think it's really hard. So, um, so sometimes I put a couple lineups in there 
maybe try to get lucky, but mostly it's 20 max double ups for me. I, I like to play it safe. Um, most of the time I do not lose money. Uh, say I do the 20 max and some double ups. Um, say say I win money in double ups, lose in uh, the 20 max um, profit there, and then maybe I have a really good night on GPP, the, the 20 max, and I lose in the double ups um, profit there, but very little times have I like lost everything, you know, so um, that's why I really like the 20 max, because even if you do bad, uh, if, as long as you spread out your ownership, you're not going to lose everything. But if you go like 100% on a fighter and he loses, that's when you're going to lose everything. So I think that's where a lot of people make their mistakes. Um, DraftKings scoring, significant strikes equals 0 0.5 points. Advances are 3 points. Takedowns are 5 points. Reversal sweeps, 5 points. Knockdown, 10 points. First round win, 90 points. Second round win, 70 points. Third round win, 45 points. And decision win is 30 points. Uh, if you're new to MMA, um, you're going to learn that DraftKings... Uh, fight metric is what they use. They are not really accurate at ca counting stuff. Um, like say, you know, uh, let's for example, uh, Sabrina Mazo, she fought out like a month ago. Um, they gave her like like a hundred and hundred plus significant strikes thrown, and I was watching the fight. I didn't think she landed even half that, and they gave her like a hundred and something. She broke the slate, um, scored like ninety points. It was it was pretty crazy. Um, and then sometimes they won't count like takedowns or knockdowns like um, Sean O'Malley got a knockdown. He got like two of them in his last fight. Uh, they didn't give him credit for any knockdown. So it's just part of the game. Uh, don't get too upset about it. You kind of get used to it, but it is a little bit upsetting. Uh, you might have to go on Twitter and, and message uh, DK Assist. I've done that plenty of times, but uh, just don't let it get to you. It's part of the game. Um, general strategy, target fights that are more likely to end inside the distance. Um, on my Patreon, I put um, the fights that are mo more likely to end inside the distance. Those fights are most likely to score higher. So I look at those fights heavily, and I see what fights are probably going to end inside the distance and finish, and I target those fights a little bit more than the fights that are probably going to go to decision. Use the Vegas odds and finish props to see what makes for a good play, and that's what I do. That's what I base my projections on, which I really love, and has, it's been doing very good for me this year. Uh, target high-volume fighters, significant strikes, takedowns, etc., you know, guys like Max Holloway, Colby Covington, they're really high volume guys. Uh, those are the fighters you want to you want to uh, target and uh, look for previous scores from the fighters. Uh, you can check the game logs there. Um, average points for a fight. You can check that out and just see what fighters score well. If you see what fighters don't score well, but don't take uh, take that kind of with a grain of salt, because sometimes uh, if they lose and score low, maybe they can come back and get a finish. So. Uh, and then bankroll management is pretty big. Uh, don't go all in on a fight card. Um, you know, be smart about it. Uh, what I typically do, I probably put about like 20 to 25 percent on a card, uh, depending on the card. Like if it's a big card, like UFC 249 is a big card, I'm probably gonna go heavy. Uh, that's just me. But do it. Do what you want to do. Just be smart about it. Um, like don't go all in and uh, just just try to tempt. Just try to try not be tempted to uh, go all in and. If you lose, it'll be it'll be rough. But if you win, uh, it would be good. Just don't try not to take that risk because sometimes it does not work out. GPP strategy, which is multiple lineups. Uh, this is when I do like the 20 max. Uh, you're gonna target the fights that will finish. Uh, do not go all in on one fighter, no matter how good the play. Uh, say like Gregor Gillespie, uh, he was fighting like two or three months ago. This is what helped help me win a GPP actually. Um, he was like 60% owned. He was smash play i mean uh he scores very very high on DraftKings uh with a lot of takedowns a lot of volume etc um he's like 60 percent owned um and i did not go all in on i went like 50 percent or like close to near the the, the weight of the field and then on the other side i played like 20 percent kevin lee and and it worked out really good because kevin lee ended up winning getting the knockout and uh, I was over the weight overweight on Kevin Lee f to the field I had like 20 25 percent Kevin Lee and Kevin Lee was like I think like 15 percent on something like that uh, spread all your ownership while having a strong core you want to have that strong core uh, that strong core is really important I f usually have a couple guys that I go like 50 percent to 60 percent on um, but on the other side of that if I have, if I have 50 percent of a guy I'm gonna have like 20 percent of the other guy just in case the 50 percent guy busts and likely uh, the 20% guy, I'll be like um, overweight on the field to that guy just in case something crazy happens. Uh, don't be afraid to target the first fight of the night. I think people make a huge mistake here not targeting the first fight of the night. The first fight of the night has been a moneymaker for me the past couple weeks. Um, I had Priscilla catch a beating, um, Bay Malecki, 
And then um, there was one more. Um, Dana. Dana. Yeah, those three, man. Uh, all slate breakers, all on the winning lineup. They were all low owned. Um, it's okay to target the first five of the night, especially if they're decent plays. Uh, but don't go all in or anything because if they lose, your night's over really fast. But uh, that first five of the night's been a moneymaker for me with low owned uh, slate breakers. The winning lineup doesn't always have have the main event. Um, sometimes the winning lineup will be without the main event guys, but I typically want to target the main event, but maybe have like some lineups without the main event uh, just to be a little different. And don't be afraid to leave salary on the table. Um, it's not it's not a bad thing to be a little bit different as well. Um, cause cause if you leave salary on the table and you win, you'll probably share the prize, the top prize with like uh, instead of like twenty people, maybe like like two or three people. Cash strategy, don't be afraid to eat the chalk. Uh, find fighters with the high floors. Look for the fighters with the best odds to win. Uh, stacking the main is a good idea, but not always. Depends on the fight. Um, play your favorite plays, stars and scrubs. Usually works best. So this is what a typical cash lineup looks for me. You'll find this on my Patreon page. Uh, this is my optimizer here. And um, so I had Sean O'Malley, who's probably my favorite play on the whole slate. Mark Madsen was a great play. Uh, Willie Zhang, I stacked her with Joanna. And at the bottom, we had Joanna and Romero. I thought they had pretty high floors. I didn't think either of them would, would get finished. And uh, Joanna ended up scoring 90 points in a, in a loss, which was awesome. Romero lost, but he went four, five rounds, which was fine. And getting Romero at the bottom allowed us to go up and get O'Malley, Matson, and Uzang. Uh, and Jamal Emmers was probably my favorite play on the slate. Although he did not win, I thought he did, but uh, judges thought otherwise. Um, he still lost, but he scored, he scored really good in a loss. So uh, this lineup cash really easy in cash. Like I said, you have like a 49, 48, 47% chance, something like that. Close to 50% chance to win in double ups. Um, and how to make that winning lineup, you got to be different. Find the low owned plays, target the finishers and fighters who tend to score well, spread out your ownership, and just go with your gut. So this it was my winning lineup. Um, this was at Masvidal and uh, Diaz. Um, so Masvidal's won me two GPPs, which is awesome. Um, don't have the screenshot of the first place, but it was, this is second place at the time. And then Masvidal was about to fight. Um, Corey Anderson, uh, low owned against Walker. Walker, everybody was on him. Uh, Anderson ended up knocking him out in the first round at low ownership. Uh, Masvidal, easy play. Everybody was on him. Uh, Rosenstruck is pretty simple play there. Um, Shane Burgos, a little lower owned than I thought he'd be, but he smashed. And then Kevin Lee. Um, this will play what is probably won me the GPP here against Gillespie. Um, ended up going out there and knocking him out in the first round. Very low owned. Kevin Lee against the chalk Gillespie. Gillespie was like 60%. And then Edmund Shabazian was a pretty simple, easy play. All right, guys, that's it for the DraftKings part. If you want to check out the FanDuel part, you can keep watching. But um, if not, make sure you give this video a like. Also, subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd really appreciate that. And make sure you check out my Patreon. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, really help you guys out. Lots of great info on there for a really good price as well. Uh, Fandle, we got the contest, MVP scoring, non-MVP scoring, strategy, and let's see. Start with the, um, the Fandle contest. You got the 150 max, 5 max, single entry, head-to-head, -head, double ups. Uh, I did play the last time it was on there. I haven't checked and see if uh, the contests are out yet, but I did see the 150 max on there, the 5 max. I'm assuming they have the single entry, head-to-head, -head, and double ups. Um, what I'd probably do is probably the 5 max is what i do with maybe some single entries if they're there. And then of course double ups. Um, don't really don't really touch head to heads or 150 maxes. Scoring for the MVP, uh, first round win is 150 points. Second round win is 112.5. Third round win is 75 points. Fourth round win is 52 points. Fifth round win is 37.5 points. A decision win is 30 points. A knockdown is 18 points. Significant strikes 0 0.9 points, and a takedown is 9 points. Uh, Fandle scoring non-MVP, first round win is 100 points, second round win is 75 points, third round win is 50 points, fourth round win is 35 points, fifth round win is 25 points, the decision win is 20 points, knockdown 12, significant strikes 0.6, and a takedown is 6 points. Um, and then we're going to check out the Fandle strategy here. You're going to target the fights that are more likely to end inside the distance, use the Vegas odds and finish props to see what makes for a good play, target the high volume fighters, significant strikes, takedowns, etc. Look for previous scores from fighters, see who scores well. An MVP is someone who is favored to finish or a high-volume fighter. Uh, basically, same thing for DraftKings here. Everything's the same, but you, you want your MVP to be someone who's m really likely to finish the fight um, or really likely to score lots of volume. But um, I'm definitely looking for that finish, probably the first-round finish. So 
uh, say it's Con- Conor McGregor versus Donald Cerrone. Um, I thought uh, Conor McGregor would knock him out in the first round, and he ended up doing that. So I'd put him as my MVP, and then you go and get guys that are likely to finish as well for um, your other roster spots and uh, or some high-volume guys. And then like we talked about bankroll management, same thing with DraftKings. Uh, don't go all in on one night. And, um, and yeah, guys, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, you can follow me on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Uh, shoot me a DM. Uh, you can comment below if you have any questions as well. Make sure you guys check out my Patreon, and the link will be in the description for that. Lots of good info on there. I put a lot of time into that. Um, I really think it will help you guys out. And if you guys checked out the contest for DraftKings, uh, the contests are huge. You got a $1 million in total prizes and 150 max, 200K to first. And then you got uh, the 20 max, 3 dollars 20 max. It's like 40,000 entries. And, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, really looking forward to having a good week. I'm going to go pretty heavy this week. I always like going heavy for the for the pay-per-view. So um, hopefully everything works out. And uh, good luck to anybody that's playing. And hopefully this video helped you guys out. Make sure you give a video, uh, the video a like if you enjoyed it. Also subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on my other videos. My DraftKings breakdown. I'm uh, going to do a FanDuel breakdown if FanDuel has a contest out. And then also going to do a prediction video and betting video as well. And, uh, and yeah, good luck, guys.